Fresh is also an owner of Factor. So Factor is pre-made meal plans. If you don't like to cook your own meals with HelloFresh, you can use the link in my comment section and you can pick your meals from Factor. In the link, you get some free meals as well. So if you guys don't want to take the time to go ahead and cook the meals like I did with HelloFresh, you can go ahead and order your own meals through Factor. The meals are amazing. They have breakfast, they have protein shakes, they have smoothies. So if you guys want to use Factor, go ahead and hit that link in the comment section. It's, it's amazing. Go ahead and make sure you click that link, get you some Teach Hanley, and support the Media Man YouTube channel, and also support Teach Hanley.
uh, dough. So I promise you guys a bow tie tutorial. So the best way that I can show you is to put it on my formal shirt. I can't do it around my own neck because uh, this may be a little bit embarrassing, but my brother do have some muscles and it's tough for me to get to the places where I need to get to. This is a 100% silk bow tie that I got from Joseph A. Bank. As you guys can see here, it's got the neck inches mark. So you can just adjust it to your neck size. I have an 18 inch neck. So I went ahead and adjusted that. Two separate parts. You got your hook right there and you got your clasp and you just attach it here. And now you have two parts. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on here. Like you would around your neck. I got my collar flipped up. You see that? It's already buttoned to make it easier. About one and a half inches long. So you take the longest end and you put it over the short end. And then you put the long end behind the loop. And then you make it a little bit tight, like a little bit snug. And for now you're done with the long end for a little bit. So you got the shorter end hanging. You take this side right here, the easiest way that I can show you guys, let me show it right there. And then you take this finger and you put it right there, like so. You hold that together. Y'all see that? Already got a bow tie. So then you take the longest end and you just bring it over the top, right down there in the middle. And you hold that in place. It's looking like a bow tie already, right? So you take this longest end and there's a little hole that this has created and you put the longest end like this and you just feed it through. Now you already got your little bow tie. Now you gotta fix it a little bit to make it tighter. Bam. So there you have it, nice bow tie. So don't get worried if the bow tie is not like symmetrical on each side. You know, it's not gonna be the same, but that's what happens when you make your own bow tie. Because when you get one that's a clip on, people will notice if you're in a formal setting and it looks too perfect, then they'll know that you're wearing a clip on. So you never wanna do that. That's a sign of dustiness, as they say. <laughs> and there you have your formal bow tie. And this is how it looks right there. Got that on there, bam. And there you have it, <laughs> bow tie. Pretty simple, but I mean, it takes some time to figure it out, but once you get it down packed, you good to go. And also, quick tip, usually when you buy nicer shirts, they come with these plastic stays, as you guys can see there. Get rid of these and get you some metal ones. They make the collar lay a little bit flatter and that's what you always want, right? So these are fairly cheap. I'm pretty sure you can get these on Amazon. So go ahead and grab you a box of those and make sure you take them out before you take them to the dry cleaners, take your shirts to the dry cleaners or you put them in the wash, right? But with a shirt like this, this is a nice, you guys can see right here, it's a formal shirt. So you never wanna wash these. You always wanna take this to the dry cleaners because it needs to be the whitest of the whites. <laughs> Shout out to Dr. Umar. <laughs> That's how you tie a bow tie. Hopefully that helps and I will see you guys on the next live stream. Meet him out. Peace. What's going on? Welcome back to the Medium Man live show on this great Saturday. I hope you guys enjoyed that bow tie tutorial. As you guys can see here, this is the same exact bow tie that I was actually wearing. This is my formal shirt that I showed you guys in the video. And also, you know, you can get the cummerbund that goes with that as well. So one thing, once you get all your suits, you know, the basic suits that you have, the black, the navy blue, a little, another color blue, a gray, a dark gray. Once you get those suits in your uh, closet, then you can start working on getting a tuxedo. You know what I'm saying? I have two tuxedos that I typically wear. One is a little bit more lavish and one is a little bit more formal. So yeah, so you can branch out and you could do that. And I would suggest in the States, I would say go to Suit Supply. Suit Supply is a great place where you can get custom made suits done or whatever and get you a nice uh, tuxedo just in case you have any formal dinners formal gatherings so on and so forth so it uh you know it always it's always good to have your own tuxedo right so yeah so just wanted to start the show off like that because you guys did ask and i told you that i was gonna come here with a bow tie shout out to the nation of islam you know doing my little 
uh, you know, tribute to them brothers over there doing good work. So yeah, here I am. So again, hopefully y'all enjoyed that uh, that tutorial. You know, so you requested if there's anything else that you guys want in regards to style and fashion, I'll try my best to put together a video. Again, I've only been in this game style game for about five years since I retired from the military, but I'm happy to pass on this information to you guys. I learned it outside bow tie a while back during like the Air Force ball and stuff like that. So I just had to make sure my skills were still up to par since y'all asked, but there you have it. So hopefully that helps. I greatly appreciate it. And before we even get started, my guy, Dante Bryant, he is our newest moderator because this brother has been supporting the show. He is a co-sponsor of every show up to this point. And I greatly appreciate all your contributions, contributions, good brother. He said, Brother Double M, what's going on? Good to have you here on this Saturday. I love Saturday shows because people tend to be a little bit more relaxed and we can kind of, you know, relax a little bit. So, yeah, so hopefully that'll help. So thank you, uh, Dante Bryant, man. I appreciate the support. Let me get back up, see who we got in the building. Before we get started, we got Daniel Barry. What's going on? He said, hey, everyone. Hey, Daniel, we got a big game today, man. The, the Lakers, we playing the Cavs. We need this win. Everybody that needed to lose outside of the Suns lost yesterday. The what? The Kings lost. The Warriors lost. Who else lost? The Pelicans lost. That was shocking. They lost to the Spurs. Um, Wimby is coming into his own. So everybody that needed to lose, they lost. So it's just... You know, there for the taking for the Lakers, man. We just need Sacramento to lose one more game. And we in there, brother. <laughs> so I will be watching. And we also got the Final Four. So, oh, speaking of Final Fours, man, that uh, Iowa-UConn game was nice. My goodness. Those uh, young ladies played very hard. And uh, tomorrow, South Carolina versus Iowa. Oh, this is going to be great. Rematch from last year's uh, Final Four. Amazing. I can't wait. So it's so a huge basketball weekend for uh, a sports fan. So hopefully y'all tuning in. Let's see here. We got we got RPM in the building. He said, what's up, though? What up? Peace. He said, peace to the family. What up, brother? Hey, uh, with that derby on, I like that. As always, Rich Turner was going on. Good brother. How are you? Houston in the building. Let's see here. E305, he says, salute to the media man in the chat. What up, though? What up? And we got Patricia in the building. How are you? She said, wow, I'm on time for a live. Hello, media men and chat. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday to do to you and blessings. Thank you for being here. Love to see that name in there, Patricia. Thank you. And we got Jake Northington in the building. He already started on the comments. <laughs> what did Jake say? Uh, the aware men of the black community have the most peace and pros prosperity. I agree. They will, they will, there will always be some level of foolery to evade with each generation. So being aware is the key to success. And I agree 100%, brother. We on the same page. Yeah, we definitely on the same page. Let's see here. And we got, I'm listening. What's going on? He says, salute. Salute, good brother. Good to see you here. XL Pro back in the building. He said, hit the like button. I uh, concur. <laughs> Dante Bryant, he said, that, that sample is from Erica Badu's Green Eyes. This is dope. Oh, yeah, it's in uh samara saying yeah she's cold i found her on tiktok you know scrolling through looking for new artists to somewhat promote and she popped up and i like what she was talking about so i presented it to you guys so yeah hopefully y'all enjoyed that <laughs> hey uh dante bryant caught it let's see here and we got Derek Gaines in the building he says salute media man what's going on good brother good to see you in here and patricia says oh how sweet Media Man did promise y'all a tutorial on this. A man of his word. I did. Yeah, y'all asked, and I got you. I hooked you up. I, I, I had to make sure I, I take care of my brothers out there. And the ladies. Uh, some ladies. I know Janelle Monet. she's a huge fan of wearing uh, bow ties as well. So, ladies, hopefully y'all learn something as well, too. So, let's see here. And jo Janelle Monet, fine. So, <laughs> just go ahead. <laughs> had to go ahead and throw that in there. She crazy, but she fine. <laughs> imaginary authors uh it cut out oh it cut out what cut out we back in the building can y'all see me i'm uh, am i good am i good patricia said uh what cut out the the bow tie the bow tie uh video cut out or the stream cut out let me know let me know uh the arizona marine what's going on he said it's a crazy it's crazy the amount of men in their 40s 
in 50s that wear clip on ties. Yeah, it's you know, and it's a sometimes you get comfortable people, you know, they they miss those basic skills. You know, when I was a young airman in the Air Force, it was just so easy for us to go grab a clip on tie, you know, from the BX or from military clothing. But, you know, once you start to wear suits, that is not proper to wear uh, clip on ties and bow ties. So it is a skill. And luckily for us, we do have YouTube. You know, I just shared the video. So I definitely clipped that up so you guys can have that. But there's probably multiple videos out there of guys teaching how to, you know, on how to tie ties and bow ties. So it is a skill that sometimes we do forget. But you are absolutely right, brother. And we got Jay Curve in the building. What's going on? He said, my brother, salute to you. Hey, Jay, been, been dropping in videos, man, making everybody jealous, you know, in, in Columbia, man. You know, y'all got to go check his channel out, man. Drop your links, uh, Jay. Let them see it. <laughs> Person 11, he said, media man got that horrible nice tease. Absolutely. And um, that was actually my inspiration for this is actually a part of my boat or for my tuxedo that I, I had made. Uh, bespoke while I was in, where was I at? What, what country, what country? Uh, where did I get my tuxedo made? Abu Dhabi. Yeah. So, um, yeah, quick on Harlem nights. If you look at his tuxedo and he also has, and I told you guys, I have two, one, I have a white coat that is the same style as, uh, quick Eddie Murphy's character in Harlem nights was wearing. So that's actually a great catch. I'm going to have to show you guys my Harlem Nights inspired tuxedo. And that's crazy because that movie was supposed to be back in what? Prohibition days around that time. So that same tuxedo is exactly the one that I can wear in, you know, today's modern modern day formal events. So that's how that's why it's important to have a tuxedo or two. So, yeah, yeah, good on you, brother. <laughs> I, yeah, I told you I'm a huge Eddie Murphy fan, so <laughs> let's see here. Uh, and we got Patricia with the $5 super sticker. I greatly appreciate it. All the support, man, the super chats are coming in. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm going to have to check on, uh, now that Patricia has donated, um, I'm going to have to check on Mahogany Jones. I'm going to send her a message to see how she's doing. I haven't seen her over here. In a little bit. That's one of my uh, day one Facebook uh, subscribers, females over there. So I'm going to check on her. I ain't seen her name over here. Thank you, Patricia. Let's see here. Uh, Kev2 said, Media Man, are you Muslim? Uh, no, I'm not. But um, I do spend a lot of time in Muslims, Muslim countries. And I know, well, you know, yeah. So I know a lot of people ask me that because I'm always in uh you know <laughs> the middle east somewhere and people ask but no i just respect the uh the religion very much so you know i like the i i, I do like the org the organization that you know like they organize very well you know everybody's in place some of reminds me of the military you know and uh my thoughts of course come from the movie malcolm x when they displayed that power outside of uh the police station so uh yeah i've always been a uh, huge support of, uh, the, of the Muslim brothers and sisters. So, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, who we got? We got Bo Rice in the building. He said, King receives <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I like that. This is, uh, Jail Black 30 is a salute, media man. Salute to you, good brother. Good to see you here. And we got Eric Jordan in the building. He said, Derek Gain, salute my brother. What's going on, Eric? How you? And we got Rad Talk back in the building with the 199 Super Chat. He said, uh, from the Water League City, Texas. Absolutely, man. Texas boys in the building. What's going on, brother? Let's see here. Uh, uh, videos uh, videos, and things that we see you. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> Thank you. And we got Mona in the building. So I guess uh, stream is good. Stream is good. Thank you, Mona. Appreciate it. And Panda Man says stream is good. Okay, cool. It may have went out, so... For a little bit. Sorry about that. Blue Sox with the fight out super chat said, Media Man, you don't watch Major League Rugby. They have games this week and go San Diego Legion. Uh rip the Toronto Air uh arrows. So funny story. I have a close friend that is a pro rugby player. He actually plays in 
uh what's that country it's probably what not not australia yeah he was a prior military and this brother actually got out of y'all know if any if i have any veterans but they used to offer this program where the australian uh military service was offering um u.s military members you know you could join their air you know their their army air force or whatever and he actually took took up that deal and that was like maybe 10 years ago and he's been there ever since and he plays pro rugby so <laughs> i'm gonna see if i can get uh i haven't talked to him in a while but i'm about to uh reach out to him and see how he's doing man but yeah i follow it when uh i see him i gotta see what team he's on but I, i'll get the information for you that's a Man, that's funny. Funny story. <laughs> Thank you for that. That reminded me to, to hit him up. I got you. Let's see here. And Mona said uh, hello to everyone, including myself. Thank you, Mona, for being there. I appreciate it. She said, uh, please like the video. Absolutely. Thank you. And let me see. Uh, let me see who we got some new here. Uh, some people said, check your email. Check your email. Check your email. I got it up. Ain't nothing. Let me see. Let me check the cash apps just in case. Uh, we got Larry just sent a $20 super chat uh, or cash app, my bad brother. I appreciate the support. Hold on. Let me uh, go ahead. Is that what you're talking about? uh Bo let me see here Bo Smith let me put this in here hold on while we here let me update the banner thank you with I just put Larry Got you in here. Hold on. There we go. Bang. Appreciate it, brother. Let's see here. Oh, there you go. Uh, thank you, Mona, for putting uh, Jay's uh, stuff up there. Appreciate it. And we got Thomas Bland in the building. Said, love the outfit, giving James Bond vibes. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Like I said, I, I I did. I forgot who who asked, but they were like, um, you know, hey, could you do a tutorial on how to tie a bow tie? And uh, yeah, so I hooked hooked y'all up. So if you guys want to see it at the end of the show, I will play it. Uh, I will clip it up so you guys can have that as well. So let's see here. And we got person 11 said, I wish more black men cared about their appearance. I'll be damned if my son out here wearing ketchup stain tank tops and sagging pants in public, man. I agree. You know, we, we going to get there, you know, because if you don't know if you notice, but a lot of uh, guys that come to this channel, if you look on their profile picture, they're pretty, you know, dressed up, you know, those guys in suits, you know, I mean, they be cold and I always, call it out so i like to see that i see I see some changes you know with black men and i'm starting to like it i, I definitely do let's see here mr donnie mac what's going on brother he said nice bow tie is that a tuxedo shirt yes it absolutely is brother it absolutely is i put the um the it's a lot of people in here we got 119 folks in here you guys weren't here for the start of the show maybe i need to play that again so y'all can check it out but yeah i explained this is actually a tuxedo shirt out. You could tell because, hold on, listen to this. Wait. You can feel that that fabric. <laughs> that's, that's how you know. Let's see here. Uh, who we got? Who we got? Any new? Neville. <laughs> What's going on, Neville Hirschfield? He said, we here. Absolutely. But I, I knew I seen the name. I had to make sure I got it. And we got Cloud House Entertainment. He said, doing some work around the house. And look at the timing, <laughs> man. I I know I know the feeling, man. I put out them pictures. I'm gonna tell y'all, putting together patio furniture ain't no joke, brothers. <laughs> oh man, but I was, you know, I was compensated very well. You know, what I'm saying I got, you know, of course, lunch and everything that I needed provided for me. But yeah, it is no joke. That thing came in five different parts. 
and start fighting for boxes. And I had to literally take time out of work to go out there, do a little bit more work. And then, you know, finally it came together. So, yeah, it took a while. And I also had to put together my grill, too, because, you know, we were out there earlier. And, uh, yeah, it's just so much better to have patio furniture. So, uh, yeah, it was a, a definitely a good pickup. So, <laughs> I know what you I know what you talk about, brother. Cloud House out there doing work. But we dusty, you know, we we dusty. So <laughs> Bo Smith. Nope. I have created a couple of YouTube shorts for you to check out, but I can't send I can't send them via email. You can't send them via email. Bo Smith. Okay. I'll check it out, man. I'll check it out. Definitely will. Thank you. Let's see. Cloud House Entertainment said, man, my wife and my man, my wife in Homewood. Okay. And Blue Sox Who Dot Super Chat said, Media Man, do you buy shirts from Proper Cloth? No. Proper Cloth? What is that? Let's see what we got here. What you got a deal for me? Proper Cloth. Proper Cloth, custom dress shirts and clothing. Oh, okay. Nah, first time I heard of it. And they're out of NYC, New York. Okay. Appreciate it, brother. I'll check it out. Blue Sox. And thank you for the $2 super chat. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Cloud, I said, my wife and home goods is a dangerous combo. Yeah, it absolutely. <laughs> Man, it, I mean, because sometimes you walk around home goods and you look at those prices, you'd be like, oh, that's pretty cheap. And then next thing you know, your cart is full and you didn't damn near spent $500 to $1,000. But the stuff be so good. You be like, man, why do I need this piece in the middle of the house? You know, and it's always a justification for something. So <laughs> I just I just let it cook. So <laughs> I know what you're talking about, brother. Oh man. So um <laughs> I'm all caught up on the super chats. Let me see here. Let me bring this up real quick. We're gonna get right to it. We got a bunch of videos. For you guys and uh the main topic of course is uh the rp and it's just getting started been hearing a lot of conversations now people are starting to notice that there is a significant change among black men you know a lot of more a lot more black men are speaking up in regards to their preferences and standards and i love to see it you know and they're doing it unapologetically except one guy that we saw uh emmanuel uh was how you say his name ocho ocho I don't know. I forgot. I don't know. I say his name, but that dude. So, but the first uh, topic that I want to discuss, and I want to get this out of the way because I've seen a lot of people send me videos on this particular topic. Hold on, real quick. <clears throat> this actually has to do with the the RP stuff. Give me one second. Thank you, uh, the one Mr. Ham. I Cho. Okay, gotcha. I Cho. Cool. So, if you guys are unfamiliar, um, I received multiple videos on Instagram, and thank you to those brothers who actually sent them to me. One of the members of Fresh and Fit, he's in his own somewhat scandal right now. The guy Fresh, uh, there's an alleged girl, it was a girl that's alleging that he got her pregnant. Right. And if you guys don't remember, I think My uh, Myron mentioned this recently. Uh, Myron had his own issue with the girl saying that uh, she was pregnant by him and that all went to the wayside. I assume the girl was lying or whatever. But Fresh is dealing with this right now. And uh, like I said, we're talking about the RP. Since those guys are in the RP spaces, I felt it was relevant to discuss because there are some lessons that can be learned here. First of all, I want to say this. To anybody, uh, any man that's aspiring to be a content creator and talking about the types of things that I talk about in these male centric spaces, you have to understand one thing. When you mess up, there's going to be a lot of people that are wishing on your downfall. So you just going to have to accept that. If you can't accept that, then you don't need to be a content creator. Because I remember when uh, the girl Cynthia G lost her channel and there was a lot of black men doing videos celebrating somewhat. And the same thing happens with Fresh. Now Fresh 
is being labeled as one of the leaders of the RBKP, RB, RP community and also a representation of RP men, right? So you see multiple videos that women have done on TikTok saying that, see, you know, see how these RP men, they tell you one thing and then they do another thing. They ain't doing what they're supposed to do. But at the end of the day, guys, everybody messes up, right? And what he did was, I mean, hey, if you're going to tell dudes to, you know, strap up and you go in there raw with some chick, some OnlyFans chick, then this is, you know, the repercussions that what could possibly happen. And all this stuff is alleged. In my opinion, I, I don't think that this young lady is uh, actually pregnant, but she did want to put him on blast because I did watch the live stream where Fresh and Fit actually did a breakdown of what was going on. And from what they say, they're saying that the woman wanted Fresh to buy her an apartment. And Fresh said no, and he didn't want to mess with her no more. So this is their way to get back at him. But he's in the public eye. So with her going, you know, public with the whole situation, you could tell what type of time that she's on because she can do that because people are going to be asking for her interviews and they may be paying, paying handsomely for it. And in the process, she can make Fresh look bad. But but, you know, from what I gather from the young lady, she doesn't look like the type that she's really going to go through with it. And I'm not going to be for or against, you know, uh, child deletion. That is not my decision to make. However, it seems like she's more interested in punishing him than actually focus on focusing on the serious topic at hand, at hand, which is the kid. Right. The kid is the one that's most innocent. If there is a kid, all this stuff is alleged. Right. So basically, she's trying to punish him and say that, hey, you know, why you don't want to be a father and so on and so forth. And also, from what I learned, is that her doing that in the state of Florida, exposing their text messages and voice recording, I believe that's illegal in that state. So I don't think she understood in her haste to make him look bad. She probably broke a law. Right. And it's just it's a crazy situation. And like I said, fresh. You know, you got to be more careful. And also to the people that's asking, you know, hey, he got a girl pregnant that he tells men not to mess with or whatever. And I don't think they ever said that. But my answer or my response to that is who do you expect these guys to date? Because they already admitted that they use seeking arrangements, you know, to get the types of women that come on their show, so, you know, so to speak. So, you know, this could happen to anyone. So this is just something that these male-centric spaces have to understand and take it on the chin. Pause. Because there are a lot of women celebrating because they don't like Fresh and Fit. But Fresh and Fit now represents all black men, black men in these spaces. So, and I just want to make it be known or, or be clear that don't deify people in these spaces, including me. And I've said this multiple times. I am human. You know, God forbid something happens to me, you know, and, you know, I get, you know, into some issue or something like that. Just understand that we are all human in these spaces. I'm just like y'all, you know, so I'm just here on a platform, you know, trying to do the best I can to give the best information possible. So when you deify people such as Fresh and Fit and saying that, you know, that, hey, they, they should be you know, better. Yeah, I absolutely agree. They should be better. Right. But we can all be better. And we're all subject to something happening. God forbid. Right. So, I mean, I hopefully he takes this as a lesson and he moves forward. But at the end of the day, he has to take responsibility. And I want to make sure that men understand that the sole purpose for having sex is not simply for pleasure. You have sex to have children. That's how we were designed. Right. So, if you get a woman pregnant, even though she said that she doesn't want she doesn't want kids, it's still her right to decide if she gets pregnant. And at that point, it is your responsibility to take care of that child. That's it. That's all. And I'm not saying that she's without fault because she is at fault. Because if you lied and said that you didn't want kids, but now you're pregnant, you understand the man has a bag. And you want to get that money. And I and people always ask the question, like, why do women or how do women have kids with guys who don't want 
children. This is a perfect example. And that's why I said it's a multiple lessons in this that a lot of guys can learn. One, use protection. And two, for the women who ask that question, now you understand why. You see it play out in real time. So this happens all the time, guys. And I was listening to James Sexton, the attorney that they had on their live stream, and he was saying that in Miami or in Florida or wherever you practice, I mean, that's why it's imperative to get a DNA test if you are a public figure and you do have a lot of money and some woman is saying that you got her pregnant, you need to take the proper precautions, you know, to make sure that the kid is actually yours. And like I said, and we know that the men who do get DNA tested, uh, 30% of them come back, not the father. So that gives you more incentive to make sure you're all your ducks in a row. And this also uh, goes into the high value thing. This is one of the issues that can come with it. If you remember what Kevin Samuels said about exercising options, he had two things that you're not supposed to do to your wife and or girlfriend. He said, no outside kids and don't bring any STDs back home. And if you can do that and don't make her look stupid, three things. And this is one of the things that can happen if you're one of these guys that exercise options. I just put out a short talking about that. There is a dark side to that. Yes, you have uh, the ability to have multiple women, but this could happen, right? And, you know, and, and honestly, <laughs> to be perfectly honest, Fresh doesn't have anything in, in regards to the woman that he decided to sleep with. The girl is attractive. I mean, she's attractive, so that's not a, a slight against him, but he did mess up. So now if there is a kid, then you go out to man up and take care of it financially because she, you know she's going after that bread because you can see the play. You know, you know what type of time this young woman is on. So again, this is just you know educational purposes. If there's any young men watching, hopefully you to take you know you take this to the bank and you understand that this could happen to anybody. Content creators are human as well, and it's just unfortunate that you see a lot of content creators talking about this and they're pointing the finger at Fresh like, hey, you know. You did this and you wrong and you trash. I'm like, brother, don't forget that we got to go out into this world as well. And something could potentially happen to us, you know, uh, God forbid. But we all human, man, and we mess up. And this is not excusing his uh, his actions, you know, but you got to deal with it. You know, if the kid is real, you got to take care of it. So it is what it is. Just wanted to explain that before we move forward. So. <laughs> Shout out to them brothers. So let's see here. Uh, uh, E3305 said Walter got password bros looking bad. Like literally. Yeah, like I said, they painted everybody in that light. Like every black man in these spaces. See, you know, what they saying they ain't doing. And it's just foolery. But it is what it is. We got to deal with it. So. Let's see here. Kenny Peoples, what's going on, brother? Uh, he said, good evening, sir. What's going on, man? How are you? And we got Patricia. She says, wait, uh, in what way does his mistake have to do with passport bros? I believe Fresh is from Barbados. Is he from Barbados? Yeah, I think from Barbados. And the woman that he dealt with is from China, I believe. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Leon008. Uh, two dollar super chat said fresh and fit are not leaders they are entertainers of rp um when people and i'll be perfectly honest with you leon when people think rp content it's about two names that come to mind it's either going to be andrew tate or fresh and fit so and even andrew tate has distanced himself from the rp as well so after them it's fresh and fit so correct me if i'm wrong so when we say, yeah, they may be entertainers, I agree with you with that, but we cannot negate the fact that there was a time where everybody watched Fresh and Fit. I remember because that was when I first got into these spaces. The first time that I heard Myron Gaines speak was on a panel show that Donovan Sharp actually hosted. And he used to, it was called The Six. And he used to have Myron on there. I think Coach Greg was on there. Kevin Samuels used to come on and a whole uh, bunch of other content creators. And the first time that I heard Myron speak, he was talking about um, dating in the black community, right? 
so yeah, so there was a time, and like I said, I'm not gonna see you know, some again some of the stuff that those brothers do, I don't agree with, especially some of the, the newer stuff. And you know, I'm a little bit too old to watch their content now. I've seen it before I used to watch them, it was funny. Now I don't watch it as much, but we cannot negate the fact that what those brothers did in these spaces, they've done a lot. So there's a lot of people that modeled their show off of Fresh and Fit, and they seem to be the most successful outside of them getting demonetized for doing some foolery and saying foolery on their platform. But yeah, at the end of the day, you know, people were on Fresh and Fit side until they start, you know, doing crazy stuff. I remember those days. I used to, I used to, you know, watch it. So yeah, so <laughs> we can be honest about that. But I agree on both sides, uh, Leon. Let's see here. Uh, mad villain in the said, Ah, bow tie. I'm a bow tie guy. Nine times out of ten. Absolutely, brother. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Let's see here. Uh, E305 says she was actually staying in New York. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Let's see here. Uh, Prime VA said everyone with the foreign woman is in a passport, bro. <laughs> okay. Uh MC recovery and relapse. Yeah, and fresh ain't no password, bro, but it's just everybody is getting blamed. So password bros, black men who have mics, we all get blamed. So <laughs> MC recovery and relapse said uh two dollar super chat said fresh, lame RP, no D discipline, not high value. I yeah, okay. <laughs> I appreciate it. Let's see here. Uh E305 said Rolo Tomasi is going to have a field day. With the vasectomy, yeah, he had a, a crazy take. I think he was saying that young boys or young men should get vasectomies at a young age. I'm like, that's that's a little bit uh, <laughs> radical for me. So, uh, Trace, what's going on? Said Pizza Medium Man Clay, what's going on, brother? Good to see you here. Let's see here. Uh, Thanos was right. What's going on? Said they don't represent me. We have to start. Letting outside groups place us in the boxes or define who we are. Yeah, and I agree. But like I said, the content creators, that's what they say. It's not us necessarily painting ourselves in the same box. I've said multiple times, I'm in my own lane. And I'd like to stay that way. But when something bad happens to a black man who has a mic and you talk about the things that we talk about here, this is what's going to happen. It's going to represent all of us. And that's what they're going with. Even though we know that it's not true, right? It's not true because we don't have, you know, we're not the same, but that's how they paint it. You guys can go on TikTok and see all the videos that the black women have done about fresh and fit and fresh in particular. So <laughs> it's on there. There's no need for me to clip them up and look at it. That's stupid. D320KG, 499 Super Chat said, much respect, media man. Women lately have been making videos on TikTok lately about no longer being approached any, anymore. Yeah, and like I said, it's guys are, and I got a funny video for you guys. <laughs> These young dudes ain't playing. So we're about to watch some here in a second. Let me, I'm just trying to get the feedback. Real quick, let me take a drink. <clears throat> Patricia said, uh, Prime VA, please read the previous comments. I was asking somewhere early on the subject. Oh, okay, y'all got it. Let me see here. Dante Bryant uh, with Fight Out Super Chat. He said, Farrakhan said, don't laugh, learn. Yeah, and that's all you can do. So, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, what I'm going to sit there and point the finger, you know, I mean, hey, he was wrong. He know it. And hopefully it turned out, you know, well for him because the girl, ain't she don't have good intentions at all. So <laughs> based off the way that she talks and what she was saying, no, she she knows what she's doing. Anytime you record somebody, you know, and you expose DMs or WhatsApp chats or whatever, you know, you know what the deal is. So we understand it is what it is. So let's see here. We got. Uh, skinny boy, 20 boy, Trayvon Diggs, Jalen Green, Fresh, et cetera, et cetera. The Simps are down bad. <laughs> Jesus. 
uh, Project Leroy said, uh, Ling Ling Ling. <laughs> This dude <laughs> wrapped her legs around Walter for a month, and Walter knocked up a Chinese man. I'm not saying that, brother, but I get what you're saying. Prime VA said, I don't know if she, uh, okay, she a uh, pageant winner and fit as well. Yeah, so the girl is, is in tip top shape, and from what I heard, she was a like an Asian pageant winner, like you said, Prime VA. So he doesn't have nothing to be ashamed about in that aspect, it would be different. If <laughs> they were saying that, hey, you know, you guys should only date these caliber of women, and then the girl that go comes clean is a, uh, you know, a, a big girl, then people would have something to be, you know, laughing at. So, <laughs> oh man, let me see. Uh, any new names? Yeah, I agree. That's too extreme, in my opinion. Too extreme. Too extreme. Let's see here. Sir uh, Patchett said, Meaning Man, have you seen the soft guy era videos and drizzle, drizzle? Hilarious. You know what, sir? I know about y'all, but I'm just so tired of being a strong, independent man. I just want a woman to come into my life and just take all the weight off my shoulders. <laughs> I can't do this alone. I'm tired of being a strong, independent man. I'm tired of it. Like, I just want to be at home, cook and clean. And then when my woman gets off of work, I can just give her her meal and she can just lay down while I rub her feet. <laughs> oh, my God. Yo, if y'all don't recognize this young man right here, this is the same guy that I did a uh, reaction to. What was he talking about recently? It was something else crazy. He, he just went viral for uh, going back and forth by making up a story. Uh, the girl, I think her name is Amani Talks, where she he was saying that he left a girl because, you know, and she kind of like flipped her words and did the reverse to do an experiment on social media. And the women fell for it by using her same story against women. And they all made reaction videos. This is the same guy. This is also the same guy. That charges young men, you know, make $20, $40 to DM their girlfriends to see if their girlfriends will respond to him, to see if they would cheat. And he makes a lot of money doing that, right? And now he, I think he's a creator of this soft guy error for the young guys. And they have a hashtag called Drizzle Drizzle, which is a play on words from the, the sprinkle sprinkle lady, right? So these young men, at first it started off as a joke. You know, him putting out this video saying that, hey, I'm tired of being independent. I want to be a stay-at-home uh, boyfriend or whatever. And it's like taking a lot of steam to the point where a lot of women are pissed off because they're doing the same thing that women are doing. And this is, like I said, I'm old. I'm 44 years old. This young man, I believe he said he's 22 years old. And he has a lot of men, young men behind him with this whole soft boy, soft guy era. And it's hilarious. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to finish up the video. I'm dying. This is Scarface Mark. This, uh, Patricia, this is Scarface Mark. My bad. I didn't say his name. This is Scarface Mark on TikTok. So let me let him finish the video. <laughs> I just want to be her housekeeper. I don't want to go to work anymore. I'm tired of working these 50, 60 hour weeks and I'm paying all my own bills. I'm, I'm just so tired. I'm tired. I can't handle it anymore. I can't. I just. <laughs> oh, no. Hold on. Let me fix it. Give me one second. I don't. I'm trying to fix the and all my own bills. I'm I'm just so I'm tired. I can't handle it anymore. I can't. I just. Oh man, it's not gonna let me play it. Come on. Oh, let me remove it. Let me see if this works. I'm gonna try and reload it. Yeah, it did. Oh, they suck. Well, let me try and re reload it real quick. But yeah, I got. It's funny. 
that dude Scarface Mark that started off as a joke like he was kind of playing you know this based off of the steam that he had on that other video but now it's taken over and there's a, a couple points in here that I've been telling men for a while and uh, hold on let me let me make sure I can bring this back up that dude oh man I'm going to try and send it back. Hold on one second. But I'm going to send it back to the phone. So I'm glad, sir, I'm going to get to your, uh, I think you sent the super chat, my bad. Let me see here. Oh, there we go. Sir, he said, uh, you the man, brother, these these young... Hold on. Now they're going to mess me up. These young men are, are, are messing around. Women are furious over this, but it's hilarious. Yeah, I'm, I'm dying laughing. Man, when I first seen that, I was like, what? And there are literally women uh, putting out multiple videos about this. And it's... I don't want to say it yet, but I'm going to just wait. Let me load it back up. Sir says, uh, Scarface has a great point, though. When a man says some of the dumb-ish women say, everyone looks at him like he's a clown or crazy. Not when women do it. Yeah, and it's a, it's a bunch of double standards in these, play, in these spaces. And I just want men to acknowledge them and just continue doing what you're doing. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, it, I mean, who's going to dig in your pockets and tell you you got to do something with your money? Nobody. Right. So, yeah. So, I mean, it's the double standards exist as long as you're aware and you continue doing what you need to do. You good to go. Hold on. Let me I'm gonna make sure this one work. There we go. Let me bring it back up. Here we go. <laughs> know about y'all but i'm just so here I we go be in my natural environment that's all i want i'm tired of it i don't know who promoted this strong independent black man thing i, I can't do it anymore <laughs> i need a hard-working woman that can take care of me pay all the bills while i'm at home cooking and cleaning that's it <laughs> so you can see you can hear the satire in his voice and this was the video that hit that last video was the one that started it off, right? And so when he put it out, you know, he's just trying to make a point. But now it's a lot of guys like, man, you know what? You're right. You know, let's go ahead and start this movement. And there's a lot of young men that's buying into it. Now, I put this video in here for a particular reason. And this is to educate black women once again, right? This is a white man that is listening to Scarface Mark's video or reacting to it. And also he has some particular words for black women. And like I said, I don't like using white men as validation, but sometimes black women won't listen to us because in their mind, they believe that it's only black men who watch RP content or create RP content or male centric space content. We don't know of any other race that talks about these types of things except black men well 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 let's listen to what this white guy has to say <laughs> nah bro this comment is too funny bro <laughs> so he said he's he's gonna come out the closet soon so the typical shaming language that a lot of black women like to use scarface mark scarface mark replied he said being a bob <laughs> expecting a provider is insanity <laughs> they call it the bop wars <laughs> so yeah so here we go the shaming language let's continue oh my god he goes she goes hit he's gonna come out of the closet soon mark goes being a bop expecting a provider is insane <laughs> and this guy goes ate her right up <laughs> oh fuck oh god the people the guys are <laughs> the guys that have caught on to all this is it's too funny it's actually too funny no but seriously i mean 
uh, it, it really puts into perspective how damaging the discourse has been for a lot of women online towards men. If we treated y'all the way that y'all talk about us online, it would be, it would be civil war. If the Did you hear what he said? The way that y'all talk about us online. He didn't say black men. So you would assume that this white man listens to what is going on. And the same thing is happening to him. It's not just black men. So that's why I got him up here. And he's not done. Let's continue. The shoe was on the other foot and it was me. It would have been guerrilla war. Bro, I need this. <laughs> they got merch. I actually really need this. I got a shirt that says woman lover on it. And like putting this <laughs> on top of that shirt. Ooh, you feel me, bro? A woman lover shirt with the, the soft guy air on top? That, that'd be a fit. I <laughs> this is embarrassing. Look, now, this is a young black woman that's trying to shame black men for this soft, soft guy thing. She says, joke or not, this is embarrassing for black men. Just black men in particular, right? But let's listen to what this white man has to say. for black men well fuck it i'll hop in then and i'll say the same thing i am in my soft guy era now it's embarrassing for all men that we're holding our standard the exact same way that you have a standard for us okay that's the woman playbook they'll either call you insecure they'll call you gay which is homophobic don't do that or they'll try to shame you why do women do that did you hear what he said don't that sound familiar is that a white guy is he quoting shaming language I thought it was only black men that talk about this stuff. Hmm. It's interesting. Let's continue. <laughs> because that's their internal playbook. They have no, they can't actually make men do anything physically because obviously we're stronger. So throughout history, that's how they've gotten to control men. However, since y'all wanted equal rights and equal pay so bad, and now that you've gotten it, it's only fair that we, don't, we go 50-50 in the relationship, which at this point in the video would invoke you saying, oh, like you're broke, you're a broke, insecure guy, naturally, but I don't know if you could tell, that is my water view. <laughs> According to y'all, I'm a high value man. Like I'm what y'all want. You want a six figure man over six one that is well endowed. <laughs> but the thing is, Asking for 50-50, like if you guys are like, oh, I'd love to go 50-50 with a man, that's fine. But the thing is y'all are asking for everything provided for, which is, you know, a guy like me could do it. Most guys can't do it, but I could do it. But imagine if a guy said that, a guy like, <laughs> and it just speaks to the ego that y'all have, that y'all think you're all worth a guy paying for everything when you guys make the exact same because that's what you wanted. There you have it. And he said one key th key there, and this is something that I've been telling the young men for a while now. No woman can make you pay for something that you're not willing to pay for. So if you get if, if you get into a situation where you meet a young lady and she's asking you to pay a bill or to send her money, who goes into your pockets or on your debit card and sends that money to her? Is it her? Does she grab your card from you? and tell you know and, and put how much money she needs and you send it to her or do you control that you control that so that's all i've been trying to tell these young guys like i don't know why it's a lot of men that get upset when women go on social media and they say that i need a man that need that can do this this and this and it's like she can say that but she just has to find the guy that's willing to do that just make sure it's not you so that's why these, these videos and these RP spaces are important because we have to let help men understand that you have power. You don't have to do things that you don't want to do because back in the day, vagina was used as leverage and guys were willing to do anything just to get a piece. But now guys are waking up. They want to make sure that they do things on their own terms. And if you deal with the woman or you come in contact with the woman that's asking you to cash up her, just to text then what do you need to do you get rid of her and you go back on the dating market and you find another woman that suits your needs that is called having an abundance mindset not a scarcity mindset guys like that if they meet a girl and she's like hey send me 50 dollars so we can discuss if he not used to getting women and this is his first number or first contact in years then he's probably going to pay that fee just make sure it's not you and be content with your decision Right? And it's that simple.
So with this whole soft guy era thing, like I said, this is not something that, you know, I need to be involved in. I think the young men have it under control. And it turned into, as it started as a joke, now it's turning into guys being aware. And this is a start of men becoming aware men. And that's all we're saying about the RP spaces. Nobody is trying to attack anybody in these awareness spaces. We're just giving guys the game so they can move uh, accordingly on the dating market, right? It's that simple. So if there's any ninja watching ladies that was coming in there thinking that, you know, the RP is about subjugating women and trying to get women to bow down, no, absolutely not. It's more so based off men understanding the dating market and how it is and moving on from it. And I've been talking about this stuff for a while now. You know, I'm going to show you a text conversation that I had one of my, with one of my friends a while back, and it's going to shock you, right? You know, I've been doing this for a while. So let me get to some of these super chats before I get in. But shout out to Scarface Mark and this young content creator here. I'm glad he was able to speak up and set the table in regards to the shaming language because that's what, you know, black women are running with over on TikTok. So now you got multiple guys, uh, Hispanic White men, Asian men, they're hopping on the train as well. So they can't say that this is just black men. It's not. It's all young men, and they all have seen the light, so to speak, and they're dating on their own terms now. It is what it is. And don't forget, ladies, y'all started this gangster shit, and this is the MF of thanks you get. <laughs> they just reacted. <laughs> oh, it's funny to me, man. Let's see here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Dante Bryant. I got that one. <clears throat> Project Lee War. What's going on, brother? With the five dollars super chat, he says, "Been watching uh, the replays for the past month. Salute to you, media man. I appreciate the statistics and studies debunking the propaganda on the internet. I greatly appreciate it, brother. Thank you." That's why my old video views going up because you thank you. <laughs> uh, Passport to Wonderless, cold name. Uh, two dot super J said, Always positive, keep it up, brother. Thank you, appreciate it, man. Thank you, good to see you back here. And truest dude, what's going on with the ten dollar super chat? He said, I'm late on the scene, but here's a little something for the private jet fund, my man. Hope all is well, my brother. It is, man, man. I'm loving life, man. I can't, can't complain. Appreciate it, man. Good to see you here. And I mess up the banner. I shared the wrong one. There we go. Okay. Let me get to the, some of the comments. Uh, Red Lord, Black Sigma. What's going on, brother? You said, yes, the world is watching. Uh, Mabuhe from SA Philippines. Uh, I mean, I can't say that. Uh, <laughs> appreciate it. Thanos was right. Say yes, Kings. If she wants to take you to Cheesecake, tell her you know your worth. That's funny. <laughs> uh, who's uh, the one? Mr. Ham said, great flip, meaty man. <laughs> hey, man. <you> know, that's, <laughs> that's an old Dre, you know? <laughs> Big boy. What's going on? White men started the movie with, with, with MGTOW. Yeah. And like I said, this is just me. We know this, right, Big boy? We definitely know how this stuff played out. I mean, hell, Rolo Tomasi wrote the Rational Mail book, right? So, but what our women like to do, they like to say that, or they'll close their ears to all the other content creators, white, Hispanic, Asian content creators that talk about the same things that black men talk about. And they'll say, well, black men are the only ones that's creating, you know, these, you know, podcasts talking about women. No. <laughs> it's thousands of uh, white, Asian, Hispanic channels, but they just refuse to go find out for themselves, right? We know what it is, man. Rich J, what's going on with the five dollars super chat? Said, "Media man, how do how do a woman expect me to buy lunch for thirty dollars? Drizzle, drizzle. <laughs> it's like that girl. <laughs> she only sending hundred a uh, thirty dollars." Man, she needs to bump that at to 100. She know how much you like to eat, Rich J. You know what I'm saying? What? You just supposed to 
have the entree with no appetizers, no desserts, drinks. You don't have to settle for that, brother. Let it, tell her. No, matter of fact, this is what you do, Rich J. You you take the thirty dollars, right? You go to the restaurant, you eat, you pay for everything else yourself. Screenshot the receipt and send it to her, and be like, "Thank you for the thirty dollars. It was used for the tip." <laughs> so she would know what level you on, brother. You know, so next time when she send you money, she better up that to a hundred bucks. You know, because you ain't no basic dude, right? <laughs> It's like a script with them, bro. You know, <laughs> MC Recovery and Relapse with two dollars super chat said, uh, "Got to go now. Late for Justice Films Fest at LMU. Man, have fun, man. Enjoy and report back. Let us know how it is, man. I greatly appreciate you uh, leaving with a nice donation. Thank you, brother. And God bless. Appreciate it. Let's see here. A sir said, "Don't laugh at me." <laughs> Mona D said, I just went shopping for my husband and paid uh, for us some, what she put, what else, what you paid for. <laughs> oh, this is good. Man, uh, <laughs> what did I, I just, a watch roll for my travel. I'm, I'm about to be uh, headed out here soon and my uh, girl bought me a travel roll for my watches. So <laughs> know your worth, Kings, you know. True as dude said, Rich J, fight out Super Chat. He said, uh, know your words, bro. Know your words. <laughs> oh, let me see. Yeah, that's right, skinny boy. We don't want, uh, no, we don't want no scrubs. You know what I'm saying? A scrub is a girl that can't get no love from me. You know? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Hanging at the passenger's side of her best friend's ride. Trying to holler at me. <laughs> oh, oh that is funny. I'm you spend like an hour laughing at the videos of the dudes. It's crazy. Word for word. <laughs> Panda man said, I need a woman who's gonna pay for my gym membership and haircut every week. I mean, that's the bare minimum, Panda Man. I mean, if she can't pay for your gym membership and a haircut, she must think that you're a basic dude. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you got to level up. You know, she she you got to let her know that you ain't no random. You know what I'm saying? That is the bare minimum. We not nah, uh-uh. Haircut, I need this gym membership paid. You know, and uh she needs to make sure she get on Gym Shark and get me a new wardrobe cuz I know she don't want you, you know, not looking good in the gym. So hey, man, you no. Know? <laughs> <laughs> CME Hustles, a shout out to you, media man in the chat, watching the stream from Iraq. It just turned 12 a.m. on the 7th, and no matter where I'm at, I'm tuning in to media man on 107.5 uh, FM. I appreciate it, man. And man, be safe out there. Uh, you know what it is in, in Iraq. I think things have died down uh, a lot, but yeah, it's a yeah, all in all, I mean, it is a just be safe out there. That's all I'm going to say. A good to see you here. Mr. Donnie Mac, $10 Super J said, I tell my mentees if she's more comfortable opening her legs for you than opening her wallet for you, exit stage left. Drizzle, drizzle. That's a good point. That's a good point. Because when, hey, when a woman like you, hey, she going to spend on you, man. It ain't You ain't even got to ask. Seriously. Yeah. Mr. Donnie Mac is absolutely right. Let's see here. Uh, Thanos was right. Said I showed up to a date. This woman expected me to pay. <laughs> the nerve her. I got a haircut. My shoes were new, and I washed my car. It's an investment. Yeah, you know she. They don't understand how much it takes for a man to get ready for a date. You know we got to get our hair cut. We got to wash our car because we don't want you know to be looking crazy out there, right? We gotta. You know, even the labor of like ironing our clothes, you know, and grooming ourselves, this costs money. You know, face wash, soap, you know, uh, exfoliation, all this, all these types of things, lotions, all the stuff that we put on. On, I ain't even got to the cologne, you know, because we ain't basic over here. You know, we buying hundred dollar bottles and up. 
So that costs money too. So she needs to compensate you for that. And also, when you go on on this date, who the hell is gonna babysit your 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 pets? Who the hell gonna babysit your dog? Why you out there on this date? So she need to pay for that as well. She need to pay to put you know your pets in a kennel while you out there gallivanting with her, because you ain't basic. You know what I'm saying? She needs to take care of all this. You know. <laughs> Look, sir said. A nice blazer is at least a thousand dollars. Yeah, at least it cost me three hundred to to get my hair did. Shoes four hundred dollars, pants two hundred, belt a hundred, underwear forty. I mean, where you can't get that money back? You spent all that for her, right? She need to understand that. So the next time y'all go out, she need to cash up you first. Just so she'll know. And uh, I'm, you know, make sure you let her know next time you go on a date, you know? So, so. <laughs> oh, man. So let, let me show y'all. So since we're on the RP topic, let me show y'all a conversation that I had with one of my female friends a while back. And like I said, I've been doing this, talking about this stuff for a while. So this is just proof. And I put the time, time stamp there. Look at this. You see that? That's April 5th, 2021. I created this YouTube channel December uh, 18th, 2021. So I've been discussing this for a while. Question of the day. Um, and this was when my friend reached out to me and she was asking. So I'm going to read this off to you guys. This is her in the gray and that's me in the purple. So. She said, she sent me a, a, a I am. She said, question for you. I said, here we go. Every time you ask me a question, I have to reel your ass back in because you didn't like my answer. <laughs> and she said, yeah, but this time is different. Maybe. <laughs> she said, what is RP? I heard you mention it a couple of times. And then I watched a couple of videos on YouTube. Some were all over the place, but I know it involves Hating women. <laughs> That's what she said. She said, I know it involves hating women. So let's continue. <laughs> and I said, no, not at all. The true definition of RP has nothing to do with hating women. Basically, and this is, this is what I said. Basically, and this is my understanding of it, is that it's understanding the true nature of women in dating slash marriage spaces and learning how to move as rational as possible. And then she said, the true nature of us in what way? I responded by saying, okay, most men and more often in the black community, boys are raised by their moms. So we're taught that women are sugar and spice and everything nice. So our first instinct is to be the nice guy. And by being nice to women and everything, and them being nice to women and giving them everything that they want, typo, you find out that it doesn't guarantee her love. So instead of looking at women as unicorns who are above fault, you see them as people who mess up just like men. And she said, what men don't, she said, what men don't know that? Like basically asking like, what? I thought all men knew this. And I said a lot, including me. But typically, women don't bother understanding male problems. So concepts like men being taught how to handle a combative woman, for example, isn't on your radar. And she said, this goes into you telling women to reach out to men for relationship advice, right? I saw your question about, I, call, I saw your question about asking women, do they have men that they respect in their circle and not guys that you've had sex with? Most women don't have a guy like that. That's why I started asking you. And I said, right. And most women only learn about men through intimate relationships. And that's bad. You rarely get the truth from a guy that you're having sex with. So that's why you need a man you respect to bounce things off of him. But the RP is just guys who've been through situations with women and passing on the lessons to younger men so they won't make the same mistakes. It's proactive rather than reactive. 
which is what older men have probably experienced already. <clears throat> and I did say, but there are guys who stay in the RP raid stage. They turn to the red pill community because a woman cheated on them, divorced and took half. So they hate all women because of it. We've all had a RP awakening moment where a woman did something foul to us and we were definitely angry, but eventually you move on once you understand that women are not without fault. You allow yourself to feel that hurt, cry and seek therapy if needed, but eventually you move on. And she said, your definition seems a little bit more rational and understand understandable than what I've heard. I said, right. She said, now I'm curious, what are some other examples of a woman's true nature? Now, watch, listen to this, guys. Let me read this. And I said, okay, generally women practice hypergamy or attempt to date up. If she makes 100K, she wants a guy to make 100K or better. You agree? She said, I'm laughing because generally that's definitely true. And I said, another one would be that if a woman dates or marries down, it's impossible for her to submit to a man who makes less than her. Remember, generally. And she said, why can't we use the exception? And she said, I agree. And that's why I like having these conversations one-on-one -on -one with women, because when you get women on a panel show, they're not going to succumb to being wrong, right? So that's why I like to have these conversations. Like I, you know, like you guys seen, like me and a uh, pick meek had a conversation. It's better that way because you don't want to look, women don't want to look crazy in front of their friends and get embarrassed or they don't want to be wrong. Right. So I like having these types of conversations. And then I told her, I said, it's hard to disagree, but somehow women in social media discussions find a way to do so. Remember, it's not a bad thing. It's just the way most women were wired. For years, a man's job has always been to protect and provide. So when a woman is placed in the provider role, she assumes the masculine position in a relationship. So submitting to a man that she's providing for is tough to do. It's nature. And she said, you should do a video on this. I'll be on the panel to disagree for no reason. <laughs> and I said, that's typically how it goes. Thanks for the man education. I told her you're welcome, right? So yeah, so this is one of my uh, military friends. So I typically, I get... Some of my, you know, my old friends will reach out because they know I have a channel, of course, and we'll discuss these types of things offline. But it was just, you know, that was just my definition from what I've learned when it has to do with women. There's also a litany of things that the RP deals with, of course, improvement, self-improvement, physical fitness, so on and so forth. And let me clear up one misconception. The RP is not against marriage. I don't know where that came from. The damn near, the majority of like, the large platforms, you know, most of the guys are married. So I don't know where women get that notion that, you know, RP is telling men not to get married. No, it's making the best decision for you. And if that involves marriage, then so be it. At least that's what I'm saying over here. So it's not my job to tell men not to get married. It's not my job to tell you to stay single. You know what you want and you have to work towards getting that. And it's as simple as that. Right. So if you want to get married, do what you need to do to, you know, start making sure you have the resources to take care of a wife. Because essentially, and men need to understand this, when you do get married, you're getting married under the eyes of God. And you're telling God that I'm taking responsible for I'm taking responsibility for another human for potentially the rest of my life. Right. That is your job as a husband. You are taking care of another human. Do y'all understand that? A wife is there, yes, to support you. She takes care of you as well. But ultimately, that is your job. And that's why marriage is so important when you decide to get married. And a lot of men don't understand that. And that's why women need, if you say that you are marriage minded, you need to understand that as well. A lot is on your husband's shoulders because he has taken responsibility for you, taking you from your father and put, bringing you into his house. So now he's responsible for a whole human being and all of the offspring that y'all decide to create. So marriage is not something to be played with if you decide to do that. But just understand that, gentlemen, 
That is your job. You're taking care of another human. And don't come on here with this glass half empty conversation. I would assume if you think that you, you know, if you're going to marry a woman, then you love her. You love her and you want to take care of her. You think she's a great person, a great woman. So this is not, well, what if you marry the wrong woman? You don't know that. Nobody knows that. And I know the catch-all phrase is, well, you know, you got divorced, so you got to pick better. How many people get married to somebody assuming that, you know, hey, this is all going to go bad once we get married? Nobody does that. So when you first get married, you think that this person is the one for you. And then things go bad. So, yes, you could say pick better. In a sense, I agree. But that's not, you know, that's, that's not where the conversation ends. Right. So I just want to be clear on that, man. It's, a, you know, it's, it's your decision. So you, you're taking care of another human and it's not as easy as just saying pick better. You know, if it, you get divorced, you learn from it, you get better and you move on. And if you want to get married again, then you do so. We just went over the d- divorce statistics recently. I'm going to put together a video, too. So uh, hopefully that helps. Yeah. Let me see here. I know I missed some. Okay, my bad. The BS is real with the five dollars super J says she needs to pay for a babysitter for my PlayStation. <laughs> That's funny. Thank you, JT Corn Rings, my man in the building. Now it's the show. We got uh, with the one ninety nine super chat said hello, media man in chat. What's going on, JT? The man. Let's see here. Uh, who said? Uh, Kenny people say everyone get your passport and leaving the matrix. Yeah, and we we discussed that, man. And I know we get a lot of guys that say, uh, get your passport, get your passport. I understand it. But the majority of men and the majority of black men won't won't become passport bros or have a desire to become a passport bro. So they got to deal with what's here and they got to find their way. So these me talking about marriage in the States, it may be for that guy. Right. Not to the passport bros. <clears throat> Red Lord said, uh, sir, sir, I find it insane what brothers are going through. Trust me, America is like a hell hole, Lord. <laughs> sir said, I'm kind of against marriage now, dude. I make really good money now. And in the back of my mind, I expect a woman will take me to the cleaners. Brother, that's your decision, right? So, and it, I just, I just understand that it will be foolish of me to have a platform and not tell guys that the best way to, let's say, repair the black community, for instance, was through family, because it is. So, but if you decide as an individual to not get married and you, you know, want to do your own thing, that's perfectly fine too. But I do have to address it from that aspect as well. So, Skinny Wood said, "I've had my passport since 2015. I don't claim to be a passport bro." Yeah, and like I said, you just. Black, every black man that travels or every man who travels is not a passport, bro. But again, that's how the media likes to paint it. If somebody, if a, you guys seen what was going on in Columbia, it was a, a bunch of men that was being deleted while over there. And all of the women who don't like password bros, they ran with it and kept saying that the password bros are getting deleted over there. None of those men identified themselves as passport bros but they were black some of them were black so they qualified as a passport bro right so it just is what it is so uh king p beats was going on brother with five out super chat he said hey media man loving the show as usual but heading in the restaurant to play this gig oh man hey have fun brother you know what i'm saying hey that dude doing it out there man you gotta let me know where you playing man i'll definitely come out support you know what I'm saying? This is going to be cold. Appreciate it, brother. Let's see, Ramona said, uh, that's a good point. I present it as a risk. You're either willing or not willing to take. And if things happen that weren't in the cards, we have to pivot accordingly. Yeah, and that's what it is. And I see both, Mona, I see both men and women using the you got to pick better as a shaming tactic to both sides. And I'm like, brother, it's not when you pick that person to get married to, I mean, you thought that you were picking the right person, right? So picking better. Yes. Next time you learn, you move on, but nobody goes into it 
thinking that I'm going to just get married and I'm, you know, I'm preparing for the worst. No, nobody does that. Even getting a prenup is not preparation for the worst. It's to protect, you know, the integrity of the marriage, in my opinion, because just in case you didn't pick right and you uh, ignore some red flags and you get taken to the cleaners from both men and women, then you got something in place. So let's see here. So, and I got some other videos. Like I said, guys, it's, it's going to be good. But I do want to address this um, Angel Reese and Emmanuel Acho situation. And it's from a different aspect than most people are thinking. I could care less what he said, but I'm going to play this Angel Reese video first, and then we can go from there. Fair use. Oh my. And it sucks, And but I still wouldn't change. I wouldn't change anything, and I would still sit here and say, like, I'm unapologetically me. I'm going to always leave that mark and be who I am. About All right, so I want to stop there. Of course, she's in an emotional state right now because they just lost, and I get it. You know, and this is not about her necessarily, her, her points, but I do want to address something. All right, so let's stop there. So his opinions are his own. He can say whatever he wants as long as he's not degrading her, as long as he's not, you know, shaming her for anything. Basically, what he did was treat Angel Reese like an athlete. Simple as that. He didn't say nothing crazy. He was just pointing out some things in regards to uh, her demeanor on the court and the way that she acted after winning the championship last year, so on and so forth. There was nothing wrong with that. It's just a black man, a Nigerian man, giving his take on an athlete. Simple as that, right? Let's continue. To say a quick thank you um, to everyone who has respectfully uh, reprimanded me. And uh... you hear what he just said? So he got pushed back, as you guys know, for giving his take on Angel Reese. And he said that people reached out to him and reprimanded him for his comments, his comments. He's a sports commentator. Why is it that every time a black man has an opinion, he has to tread lightly? He has to walk it back or don't say this about black women. Why do we do that to black women, black men in public? Why is people reaching out to him and reprimanding this grown man on saying what he said given his opinion on Angel Reese. That's the reason why I played this video. Has nothing to do with his comments or Angel Reese. It's the fact that at some point, black men have to start have to start protecting black men in the public eye. Because we cannot have this happen every time a black man comments on black women. The same thing happened to Tyler Perry when he said that, that foolery about paying a light bill. Everybody was pissed at him. It's like black women are above reproach. Nobody can talk about black women in the public, especially a black man. Shout out to Kevin Samuels for actually saying that. And it's crazy that he has to walk back his statements and people are asking him to apologize. Apologize for what? He didn't degrade the young woman. There was another girl saying that, oh, she he referenced her to like a dog. You know, you were a dog. That slang in basketball terms for you were actually good. But they were trying to paint it. You can't refer to a black woman as a dog. No, she's an athlete. She plays basketball. That's what he was talking about. And it's just like every time black men are expected to tuck their tails when they have an opinion. And it's starting to get embarrassing. Let's continue. Let me show you. I offered brilliant opinions on the Angel Reese conversation. I do not believe there is any one way to think about things, but thank you to the Ryan Clarks, the Essence Atkinses, the Bozma St. John's, um, the Trellas, the, the different individuals who is publicly and privately um, just giving me good wisdom, good feedback, uh, good, good discernment. Um, I understand. I understand. I understand. I think life is all about understanding. 
And so I just want to applaud those publicly, you watching, and those privately who have respectfully, the operative word there being respectfully, who have respectfully reprimanded me. Matt Barnes, incredibly, incredibly, incredibly wise words. Um, so I thank all of you all for that. I do not stand on a hill saying that I am right and you are wrong. I simply stand on a place saying, hey, this is what I believe. What do you believe? Let's listen to one another and construct a collective belief. So love to everybody who's respectfully reprimanded me, and I appreciate it so, so, so very much. Thank you all for that. Respectfully reprimanded me, a grown man. He didn't do anything wrong. <clears throat> I just don't understand it. And I have some examples of what I'm talking about here. It's not just him. And I'm, of course, I'm not sticking up for this brother because he say, said some outlandish takes and you know before, right? But that's his right to say whatever he has to say as long as he's not disrespecting anyone. He didn't disrespect Angel Reese. I'm just asking for black men to have the right to say what they need to say when they're doing their job. And there's no need for him to be reprimanded by other grown folks, black men and women. What? So let me show y'all something real quick. Give you some examples. That's why maybe a lot of successful men marry white women, but that's different. What? So you hear where he, how he stopped? He said, that's why a lot of successful black men marry white women. Now, granted, he's wrong. Right. And I want to be perfectly honest with this. Eighty three percent of black men who make over a hundred make a hundred thousand dollars or more are married to black women. I've done the statistics on this a while back, but this is the narrative that black women like to push. Now, granted, I will give him this. There are far more black men than black women who are married to non black black women when they make a significant amount of money. But at the end of the day, 83% of those men who make over 100K are married to black women, right? But he had to stop himself and, you know, hey, that's another topic for another discussion. But listen, let me show, hold on, we're not done. So, come on Different now. conversation? Hey, because hold on, slow, slow down. Not you, a different conversation? You know what I'm saying? Because it's Let like, him slide past that when it gets to No, point. explain to us why, it's not an attack, but explain to why you think, what your theory is to why successful black men marry or get with white women uh, i think i think they under they they're understood on a on a different level white women are the black men from the white women oh white women understand black men better no 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 no, no. he said what? on a different Whoa. level on a different level wow. no. he, he said on a different level on a different level slow down jonathan been majors good. no no jazz no. we've been <laughs> sorry, good don't do that. me like that sorry, sorry. People... now you see that it's like oh slow down no you ain't gonna paint me like that I didn't say that. The brother didn't say anything wrong. So he has to walk on eggshells when he's talking about these conversations. But we have so many examples of black women going on everybody's panel show saying anything they want about black men. And nobody says anything. So why do black men have to tiptoe around conversations just so they won't get shamed in the public eye? Why does that happen? This is crazy. Let's continue. We're going to watch this. Don't so, do me like so, that. So white women understand black men. In a, in, a, in a certain way. In a certain way. In a certain way. And, okay. and to be honest with you. Have you been with any white women? Of course he has. See, so this is how they invalidate his, his points. Why does that matter? Why does it matter if he dated white women? Right? Now, this is where he effed up. He has to justify his his uh his stance on this. Listen, listen how he answered this question. Watch. He's in Buffalo. Oh, I, 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 I have, but not, not nothing like I never had a like a relationship. I've probably you, slept you, with a white woman before. Okay. You hear what he said? You know, I, 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 uh, I, I, I never had a relationship, but I slept with white women. You see how he has to. Let them know, like, hey, you know, it was just sex and nothing else. Brother, just admit it. Do you really think if it was a black woman up there and she was one of these divester women and she was saying, hey, you know, oh, yeah, I dated white men. And this happens all the time. Like, I don't know why we tripping. 
But we're not done. Here's one of y'all favorites. Let me show y'all real quick. That made me think about um, <laughs> Kevin Samuels. Why? Why do you think about Kevin Samuels? In terms of, in terms of what I think he, I wasn't subscribed. So for the record, I wasn't one I of was his. I was gonna say you. Hear, you hear what he said? For the record, I wasn't subscribed to him. <laughs> Brother, you watch Kevin Samuels. Stand on business and tell her. Why did you stop in your tracks and now you walk in the back? I didn't subscribe to anything that he said because she said, why are you listening to Kevin Samuels? Man, where your balls at, brother? Let's go back. Crazy asses. Have you been with any white women? Of course he has. He's in Buffalo. We gonna watch the. the oh, I, 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 I have, but not, not nothing like I never had a, like a relationship. I probably you, slept you, with a white woman before. Okay. That made me think about um, Kevin Samuels. Why? Why do you think about Kevin Samuels? In terms of, in terms of what I think he, I wasn't subscribed. So for the record, I wasn't one. I was of his, gonna say you better put a disclaimer you know, quick. I'm not one of his followers, um, but when I do talk to people that have been in tune with his messaging. It does seem from the outside he was trying to. That woman is crazy. <laughs> hey, you can't tell me no different. Something wrong with Amanda Seals. And she's been going through it recently, trying to get her flowers, people not inviting her to award shows or something. Something wrong with her. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Let's continue. You. I guess uh, look at her eyes. What's the word? Balance out the the criticism, yeah. kind of even the playing field. Is that what he was trying to do? In in hindsight of men who brother this, say it this right. Black men, we <laughs> are raised in a matriarch society. You're not raised in a matriarchal society though. That's it, false. I mean, just because you're raised by a woman doesn't mean you're raised in a matriarchal society. So <laughs> that was just a quick clip of another example why black men can't fully express themselves. Why? Why can't we have real conversations about our feelings and what we think about certain situations? We always got to tiptoe around the conversation. This is crazy, man. And it's funny, if you watch any Kendra G show, she'll tell you that when a guy comes up there and he's trying to describe the type of woman that he wants, he'll... He'll try and be as delicate as possible to say that he don't like fat women, right? But Kendra G has to tell the men, like, no, you can say exactly what you want because women get up here all the time and tell us exactly what they want. So you say it. And she makes the guys say, I don't want overweight women. I don't want fat women, right? Some guy just recently called and it was pissed off that he, he was wrong because when he first made an appearance on the show, he wasn't specific about the type of woman that he wanted to date, right? And he didn't say that, hey, you know, you need to be in shape. So he left it open. The dude came back and said that the only people that reached out to him was big women. And he was pissed off at himself like, man, I need to be more, more specific now because these women was like, I didn't even know they made them that big. <laughs> because he was trying to be nice, right? But women don't show y'all that same grace. Let, hold on, let me show y'all. And I'm glad Jess Niece exposed the truth on Kendra G's show. Listen to this. Please don't come to my DM with BS because I'm not on it. I'm gonna shut you down real fast. She's okay. shutting she shut the niggas you. down, period. Don't play with her, she'll buy it. All right, girl, thank you. I came natural. So no, fake, no makeup, no filters, nothing. You, What you see is what you get until I get extra cute. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, I love y'all. I love you, Bye. 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 Um, so, so as you guys can see, the young lady at the bottom, she's, you know, she was huge and she had these outlandish requirements for men and this is just niece responding to it listen to this i want to say this i want to bring this up because um although i wasn't the biggest fan i'm not a hater and niche says that she has been watching y'all always talking about kevin Samuel. that man ain't lied once and i don't care how harsh he is he ain't lied women don't like to hear the truth that lady knows she needs to lose weight and she's beating all around the bush. We're talking real stuff. You're you 
or there's a lot of people who are overweight, but then it's like, come on, we're gonna be for real. I need to lose weight, and I know that. But you talk about standards and vibes, and I, when I asked what's the top three things men want, she talking about confidence. No, what kind of confidence you? I was talking about men. So I just feel like women don't like to hear the truth all the time, and sometimes when somebody tell us that, we have a problem with it. But yes, that was all my two cents. And, and she don't like to listen, so you overweight, and you don't like to listen. So, I mean, she just told you right there. So, guys, man, don't be afraid to speak your mind. Don't be like Emmanuel Acho and get on there and start walking things back or Benny the Butcher and get on the show, man. We can, we, you can say what you want to say, brothers. It's okay, man. We in a new age now. You have your own platforms. Say what you got to say, man. It's all right. It's cool. Stop walking things back. It just makes black men look weak. Every time we have a take that black women disagree with, we got to sit there and go back on somebody's platform and apologize. So I'm pretty sure that it's going to be something more formal that Emmanuel is going to have to do on air where he apologizes to black women. And I'm like, for what? For treating that woman like an athlete? And again, I like Angel Reese. I think she's an amazing basketball player. She's going to do well in the WNBA. But that has nothing to do with his own opinion as a sportscaster, sports, you know, commentator. He has the right to do that. And I just hate the fact that black men have to go through this every time. When is it going to get to a point where you got other black men of prominence getting, you know, like standing with him and be like, hey, man. You may not agree, I may not agree, but he has every right to say what he has to say. And that's the end of the discussion. Instead of sitting there bowing down every time somebody doesn't agree with, you know, something that a black man says. We got to stop that shit, man. It's got to stop. So hopefully y'all get the picture. Man, this is it's just getting out of hand. It's, it's crazy. It's foolery. See here, uh, Intellect with the five dollars super chat. He says spending this year and next to focus hard on training. One benefit of completion will be being able to do the SYSBM slash passport bro lifestyle permanently. Hey man, you got a plan, brother? Work to it. And he also said he said five dollars super chat said he ain't wrong as a six figure brother. My first wife was white and Filipina, and if I remarry, doubtful my next wife will be Latin or Latina or Asian, S-Y-S-B-M. Hey, man, you got it. Plan is in place. <laughs> Let's see here. And we got a lot of comments, 224 folks. Let me see. Uh, I'm Divine Photos. Athletes get criticized all the time. Yeah, that's, he, man, it's, it's nuts. Thanos was right. So she's a black woman, a queen, the sun and the earth, the pinnacle of civilization. Lord, I know that was saying with sarcasm. <laughs> Lawrence Ross, drizzle, drizzle, media man, Mona D in the chat uh, in the house. But don't get me started. <laughs> Y'all <Yeah>, boys. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. here. Yeah, I get a couple more. Uh, speak in your mind speak your is that speaking your mind speak in your mind okay uh when john McEnroe was asked does he want to apologize for his comments on serena williams on the morning show with gail king he stood on business and flat out said no i remember that and i don't know why black men can't do the same it's it's nuts uh skinny boy hit the like button appreciate that brother thank you and I am Divine Photos. No one is above criticism. I agree, man. Especially if you're a public figure. Like, dang. And she, and, and I don't, with Angel Reese, she did say something that was kind of wild to me. She was like, she was being sexualized. But she did a, a magazine cover for, what was it? Was it for Sports Illustrated? Where she was like in bikinis and stuff like that. And that's going to happen. Like, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand the logic in that. When women, you know, not, and this may be not to her, but when women dress crazy, you're going out the house in lingerie, everything's see-through, and then you get pissed off 
that men are looking at you like it's just it's it was wow lord yeah and this is this is true all the other stuff that she was talking about you know getting deletion threats and no nah, yeah absolutely man and not and emmanuel wasn't talking about that <laughs> that's what i'm saying like people was like she was talking about her getting death threats like he didn't even focus on that he was he was keeping it about her demeanor on the you know on the floor as a basketball player but yeah that that is unacceptable her getting uh deletion threats that's crazy that's stupid but there's some crazy folks out there so who knows man oh and let me give y'all an update on this video right here this young lady lord have mercy um if y'all remember last week i did a video about a young black woman trashing the passport bros and i specifically said in that video that black women need to stop saying these types of things because people of other countries the women in particular are getting pissed off and they're going to get mad at the black women who are expats who are digital nomads and they live in those particular countries countries because they're going to think that all black women feel the way that these crazy ass black women over here are talking about the password bros and the women so now this young woman is back and she's giving her rendition of an apology for what i said that's all let me show y'all real quick here we go i deleted the post that i made um regarding passport bros and my distaste for what they're doing she don't even know password bros and she had to delete that video the one that i highlighted right because she was getting a lot of pushback and she was like she has a disdain for them and it's like what what are you talking yeah so there we go uh i deleted it last week because i did not like my delivery it came off more as if i was judging the women and not the men for those of you that are new to this subject, a passport bro is basically a man that gets a passport and goes to third world countries and parts of Asia and Africa where uh, the women are poverty stricken and do not have rights, where they uh, one in four of the women are sexually abused before the age of 18, um, where they're basically like slaves. She and this is her. This is her apologizing. Supposedly. Are you serious? Oh my God. They don't have rights in Africa, in Asian countries. What are you talking about, lady? Just stop. Nobody, nobody told you to do this. Oh, Lord. Um, these men try to say that they're going to these third world countries looking for um love and marriage and a woman that is domesticated submissive and respectful but in reality the majority of them are going down there to sexually exploit these women they ba basically sex tourism she's she's doing this commentary like somebody is paying her to say this there's no need for you to even comment on that of things that you don't know i i don't know why black women like to do this the ones that just don't like black men what sense does this make you don't have to respond here we go and to the asian bitch up in my motherfucking inbox calling me monkeys telling me to go back to the jungle say i'm a slave and telling me to fix my skin color and grow my hair i'm about to bake your ass i purposely did not block you so you can see this video when i say i'm eat your ass up I'm eat your ass up. And then you can go get your mama, your cousin, your auntie, all of them. You can get the motherfucking kids too. I'm finna eat all y'all ass up. Hold on. So that video right there that I just showed was her responding to the, the inboxes that she's getting from women of other countries. They've been calling her out her name, doing saying all kinds of foolery, which I don't agree with at all. But at the end of the day, she started this foolery. There was no need for her to comment on this. And she made a nine minute long video cursing out women, women of other races when you weren't even invited to the conversation, the password broke conversation. Nobody would even knew this young woman's name if she didn't make that crazy ass video first. And I'm gonna use this as an example to tell black women to stop commenting on things that you don't know anything about. You don't know about the passport bro movement. 
You probably never even been to those countries. And stop commenting on the women over there because they are getting upset. And now she's fighting for her life on TikTok because they coming at her, which, like I said, again, I don't agree with. But the crazy thing is that there were multiple black women in their comment section saying, yes, yeah, sis, get them, get them. That's right. We behind you 100%. With nobody understanding the fact that she started this. And that's what the crazy thing is. Like, there was no need for you to involve yourself in this conversation, ma'am. You could have just successfully bowed out. I've been saying this for two years now. Like, y'all messing it up for black people who just want to travel and enjoy themselves. Black women, y'all got to stop, man. At some point, somebody got to speak some, you know, some sense into y'all. Leave the password bros alone. Leave the women of other countries alone. And please find out the definition or what countries are actually third world countries. Because, you know, if I hear one more black women refer to Japan as a third world country, I'm going to start reporting y'all asses. <laughs> like, it's just getting crazy, man. Goodness gracious. Let me see here. Leon 008 with the Fight Out Super Chat said, what do black what do black women don't understand? Angel Reese is popular because black men pay attention to her and the other white women. We cut Shikari Richardson for them. Yeah, <laughs> I like Shikari Richardson. Yeah, and, and yeah, we starting to pay more attention. Like I said, I watch uh college basketball, you know, just because of these, you know, those what couple of women. Well, for Don Staley, of course. And uh, you know, Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, and man, those those girls are cold, man. And uh Juju, Juju, Brandon, man, my man with the 50 dollar bomb on your boy. Let me go ahead and update the banner since we got a heavy roller in the building. <laughs> a high roller. Hold on, let me see here. Let me get you in there, Brandon B. Bam. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. No comments or questions. My man. Oh, wait, we got some more. Hold on. Dante Bryant said uh, she's apologizing with the two dollars soup chat. That's what I said. That was supposed to be an apology. <laughs> it's crazy, right? <laughs> Black crack and what's going on with the five dollar super chat said, and Keisha wonders why the interracial marriage rate for black men is twenty one percent and rising fast. Yeah, that's crazy. Black men have hit the seventy nine percent mark for married to black women. It was what eighty five percent. Jesus, right in front of our eyes, man. Dante Bryant two dollar super chat. He says what. Japan is more advanced than the U.S. Man, you go on TikTok and they start naming countries and you like, what the hell are y'all talking about? Like, <laughs> Goodness. All right. Um, let's see here. Uh, Mona said, oh, wait, I thought black women are most educated. I, I don't know what the hell is going on. In their haste to shame black men they just name it off countries and then women get mad and like i said i don't agree with that at all but you when you initiate something and you calling these women uneducated and they ain't able to take showers and foolery like that like what you expect them to do like jesus <laughs> black crack with the five dollar soup chest said dr moist dr moist Mo <laughs> moist <laughs> got caught out because he went off script and said Reese Reese wanted to be the villain and she got what she asked for and the hyena clan attacked him. <laughs> yeah, man. She, I, she, I mean, trust and believe, if, if LSU would have won that game against Iowa and Caitlin Clark, man, them girls would have celebrated like they did last year and they deserved it. You can celebrate. Like I said, we if they want to be treated like regular athletes and you got to accept the criticisms that come with it. Because I think that's what 
attracted a lot of men to the women's game now, the college basketball game, because they seen that they actually cared and there was some aggression involved in the play. Like we we were under the impression that those two women or the women didn't like each other. You know what I'm saying? And it brings out a little bit more passion while playing playing basketball. So, I mean, it, I don't know, man. It's like y'all want to be treated equally, but only when it you you want to jump in and out of it, jump in and out of equality, and be a, you know treated. Uh, uh, it's just com- confusing, confusing to me. Uh, Intellect with the five dollars super chat says spent eighteen days in the Philippines over Christmas and New Year's. Needless to say. After I visited some other countries in that region, I will be back. Yeah, and I enjoyed my time in the Philippines. I went in 2011. 2011, I was in Cebu, which is the second largest city in the Philippines uh, next to Manila, I believe. So Cebu was amazing. I had a great time. So yeah, Thanos was right. Said they don't want to be treated equally. That's a misnomer. They want to be treated better. Yeah, and I agree with that. I'm glad that you put it in such clear and concise words. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Lawrence Ross says, Shikari's not a baby mama because no brother can catch her. Yeah, but she, uh, yeah, that, that young woman is polarizing and she be flying. <laughs> I'm a fan, man. And, she, and she's an attractive young woman, too. So let's see here. Uh, Prime VA said, sir, Asians had MP3 players in the 90s. We didn't get that until early 2000s. Yeah, and I just remember um, back in the day, you know, video games when I used to play when I was a young kid, we used to always hear about Japan having these advanced video game consoles. What was that one? It was one that I always wanted. It was called, damn, was this like Super something or? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Like Japan always had like these, these high powered video game consoles. What was that shit called? Was it uh Neo Geo? Is that right? Neo Geo. I think it was Neo Geo, and it was another one too. So yeah, they always had some. Yeah, okay. Let me Neo Geo. Okay, Mister. Uh, Akon, yeah, Neo Geo, yeah, and it was another one too. It was, it was something else. I remember Dreamcast. Dreamcast was cold. Neo Geo, yeah, I always wanted Super Famicom. Wasn't that like uh, Nintendo? But it was called Super Famicom. Yeah, I remember that. Y'all know what I'm talking. See, yeah, y'all. See, we got some older folks in here. I'm glad y'all. <laughs> Thank you. Let's see, uh, Rich J, two dollars super chest at Media Man. Uh, Appalachian, West Virginia, and Gary, Indiana are not third world. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Oh, man. Yep, Turbo Graphics. Yeah, Turbo Graphics. That came over here. I never got that. I remember I thought my grandma had bought me a Turbo Graphics because I kind of cheated and looked in the Christmas, you know, present package. And I made a little hole, you know, to see what was in it. And it was something that looked like you know, say like graphics or something like that. And I was like, oh, she bought me a Turbo Graphics. I woke up on that Christmas day. I ripped that open and it was a radio. <laughs> it was a nice radio, but it wasn't a Turbo Graphics. So, <laughs> so I, I was pissed off, but I was happy for the radio. So, <laughs> uh, Prime VA said my cousin had a Neo Geo. Uh, he had Metal Slug and Fatal Fury. Oh, the Fatal Fury was a cold game, man. <laughs> They was they always had the best video games like early on. So, oh, and it, uh, so before we get out of here, I want to play this video for you guys, and I want you to. This is where I want the chat to be involved. Tell me what you think, what what her problem is, because again, I see multiple videos of a lot of black women complaining about the dating market and their dating experience. And that's why I want to open my platform up to have like these one-on-one conversations because I'm like, man, what are y'all doing out there? But listen to what this young lady has to say about her night on the town experience. Here we go. With a couple of my homegirls after church and 
there were five of us. Um, four of us were black. One was white. And the four of us black girls were single. And the white girl is in a happy, healthy, thriving relationship. Her partner. So four black girls single, one white girl in a relationship. Here we go. And by the way, this young woman is attractive. So we can give her that. So listen, to let's listen. Is Hispanic and they have been dating for a few months now, but like the normal progression met, hit it off, went on a few dates, got in a relationship, long distance right now, meeting parents soon, like the normal. Okay. No, no, no gray, no limbo, no nothing like that. And then me and all my black homegirls are talking about our relationship status and all of us are <laughs> all of us are single for sure um all of us are like actively dating some more active than others um and but nonetheless single but then we're kind of telling the stories of like the guys that we're talking to or have gone on recent dates with and like the struggle stories are insane and for reference we're all in between 27 and 29 Maybe 30. Why is this the commonality with me and all my black girls? Like faithfully. Not this, just this group of black girls, but like so many, so many. My closest friends, my black girlies that I've met on assignments out, like all my black girlies that exclusively date black men are on a struggle bus. And a part of me is like, just get off the bus date other races start dating any other race and there is something in my stomach that immediately just gets sick at that thought i want black love I once read this article and it was saying how black women need to start dating outside of their race because it's not working like it broke down all these statistics and all these things and i did a poll on my instagram story like would you rather date down or date like date down with any race so date down with a black man so you know so, and this is, now you start to see the, the problem here, right? So this is the way I hear black women who try and justify dating outside of their race. They always paint the black man as the one that you have to settle for. But for some odd reason, the white man, he has all of his stuff together and he has the money and everything that she needs to take care of. And her response was rather disingenuous because she's like, I get sick at the thought of dating outside of my race, but I did think about it. And it's been this poll and so on and so forth. And I've done multiple streams on this or whatever. I mean, we could go over, you know, the, the statistics here. Hold on. Let me let me let me give some, you know, some some information to black women who say that the catch all are the best thing to do because you're having a bad time on the dating market. When you date out, you know, when you're dating black men, you say that you should date out you should date white men so let me hold on let me just give y'all some information in there so the narrative is black women just need to divest from black men and date slash marry white men right so real quick the total black female population over the age of 18 and this is from pew research in 2022 it is about 18.8 .8 million black women over the age of 18 29% or 5.4 million of black women are currently married. 13% of black women are married to non-black men. 13% of that number, that 29%, 13%. 710,000, right? So if you have 13% of 5.4 million, that's 20, you're from that 29%. That's 710,000 black women married to non-black men. So if you take that 710,000 and you divide that by two, that comes out to 355,000, which represents the number of black women married to white men. And that approximate is based off of last, last reported numbers on blackdemographics.com because they had half of what 7% of black women were married to white or married to non-black men 
when the numbers were reported in 2020, right? So you take half of that, that 7%, it was like 4% were married to white men. So I just put it in half and give black women 355,000. And then to put things into perspective for black women, if there's 5.4 million uh, married black women and 355,000 are married to white men, that percentage is 6.49%. 6.49% of married black women are married to white men. Now, let's expand that to the total black female population. If there are 18.8 .8 million black women over the age of 18 with only 355,000 married to white men, 355,000 out of 18.8 .8 million equates to 1.88%. 1.88% of the total black female population over the age of 18 are married to white men. So if the conversation is, we just going to date outside our race, y'all got an uphill battle. Because if I'm telling you out of all the married black women, only 6% are married to white men and that are y'all total population, only 1% are married to white men. If you're willing to fight that battle, have at it. But it's funny that you'll do that, but you won't get on a black man's program who is doing what he's supposed to do. And you want to paint every black man as a boogeyman because you have a bad dating experience because you don't know how to choose a proper mate. And also, what makes you think, women who think like this, what makes you think that you're you're just that good. Do y'all ever do any self-reflection and just, you know, kind of look in the mirror and be like, man, I've having all these issues with dating and it's all their fault. That's what you say. Has it ever dawned on you that you may be the issue? You may be the problem. Have y'all ever thought about that? Like Jesus. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Let me see. I'm going to let her play a little bit. I'm going to get to the comments here in a second. Let go of some of your non-negotiables, a man that makes less than you, a man that like, whatever, whatever your non-negotiables are, date down from those um, or date white. And a majority of black women said they would rather date down. And I'm like, what is the chokehold? So that's the whole narrative that black women are just so race loyal to black men that they won't they won't date outside their race, even though it's for their own good. Right. And I, I just don't understand where black women get this notion that white men are checking for y'all like that. Again, and I keep saying this white men, when they do marry outside of their race, it's Asian and Hispanic women first. Black women are the least married to white men. And it's just funny that every narrative with women like, you know, the young lady right there, even prominent black women, they'll tell, they'll give black women advice to just date out and are marry out. It's not happening, but they are having kids with y'all, you know, if you didn't know that. So, I mean, if that's considered a win, then so be it. You, you know, your kids have good hair. Right. That's what y'all say. I'm going to you know, have me a kid by a white man so my kids can have good hair. That's what y'all want to do. Have at it. So, yeah, just let me see what y'all say. If y'all got some advice for this young lady. Let me get the comments. Uh, the guy in the black suit was going on. Good brother with $10 super chat. He said, medium and excellent show this evening. I returned from Santiago, Chile, Chile two weeks ago, and I can't. I can't reiterate enough for the brothers to travel. Thanks for all you do, my brother. My goodness, man. And last time I was in Santiago, man, I had one of the best times of my life. It was during the, um, if the guy in the black suit is here, they have a festival um, that, that goes on for like a week. And I just so happened to be there during that time. Oh. <laughs> I, yeah, I ain't even supposed to think about that stuff now but yeah had a great time I, I know you enjoyed it let me see uh 
let's see prime says they act like non-black men are interested in black women like that yeah i don't know where this narrative comes from because you get one white man and he'll get on there and he'll say uh you know we you know we love black women or whatever and all this stuff and he'll get all the admiration but this white man won't marry them it's just crazy but they like to see you know what they see on tiktok like it's it's just crazy to me like they'll see a black woman a young black woman with an old white man and they call that couple goals so it's crazy cm because good black men are invisible to y'all yeah we know what it is man it's unfortunate, but uh said did I miss Oliver? My bad. Oliver said they call hookups dating, hoping that a dude from the roster steps up and makes it a relationship. Flawed logic. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Akon said 6.49%. Y'all divestment is exaggerated. Yeah. Overly exaggerated, Mr. Akon. I but nobody talks about this. They just blindly give black women this advice. Like white men are just marrying them. You know, like, like black women have been placing themselves on hold and they came together as a collective be like, you know what? Now we're going to try and, you know, um, now we're going to open ourselves up to marry white men. And they made a collective decision. And white men were just kind of waiting at the gates for these black women to hop over the fence so they can have access to them. That's how our the women who think like this think. Like they were holding themselves back and white men are just waiting for the chance to marry all these marriageable black women, right? Out of the 40, what, 48% that are single, never married? The way black women tell it, all of them are marriage, marriage potential. You know, I mean, they're, they're, they're wives, so. And at that point, man, you just let them cook. Like, literally, <laughs> let them cook. I get a couple more. I'm missing some. Uh, Sir says, Prime VA, they love putting black men down and categorizing all of us as broken beneath them. It's foolery, man. Uh, Red Lord said, date down is their excuse to be with Glactavius. Yeah, and like I said, at that point, I mean, there's really nothing you can do. So you just try and point this stuff out and give them the truth. I'm going to clip it up. Let me see here. Uh, Prime VA said, by the time a white man is pandering to black women, he's three times divorced or he just can't pull other women. Yeah, and and... I know a lot of the white guys who do that, they know. They know that it's a you know, black women are an easy target when it comes to pandering on social media. It's unfortunate that nobody is woken up. So hold on. One second. Yep. So you guys know that uh I'm glad that you put this in here. I actually um, did this live stream. I was, I was just thinking about uh, pushing it back because the Lakers were playing around the same time that, you know, I live streamed. But I did this for you guys, and I'm glad that Neville just uh, <laughs> informed me that the Lakers got that dang dub, and we are in the A seed now, sitting right. <laughs> so I'm, after this, I'm about to go watch the replay. But um, but yeah, man, appreciate the update, man. And uh, I was checking over here to see, and I just kept getting a thumbs up. So it's like, <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for that, brother. I appreciate it, man. Oh uh, man, but I'm definitely going because I got you know NBA TV, of course. So I've caught every Lakers game, and I'm gonna go back and watch the replay here in a second. So see, uh, sir said I do love some African or West Indian uh, black women. Though the ladies are beautiful can cook in their own business. Yeah, no black man has an issue. That's the funny thing. You know, black men don't have an issue with black women. <laughs> Just stop lying on black men like them and take some accountability. Like, Jesus. Let's see here. What somebody say, congrats to your Lakers, dude. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Like I said, I took time. This was more important. But 
we will go ahead and get out of here so I can just enjoy the rest of the week. And I want y'all to do the same. Make sure I check the cash apps real quick. Jesus, hold on. IQS came through with a hundred dollars cash app. Jesus Christ, man. You doing good out there, man? <laughs> Cause I know you took a break, man. Hopefully you got my email, but uh International Quiet Storm sent in a hundred dollar cash app on your boy. Man, I greatly appreciate it, brother. And hopefully you'll be back here in these streets shortly, man. I know you uh enjoying your time, man. I did get the email, I responded, but I kept getting it sent back to me. So I don't know what happened, but uh, if you're watching, man, I did get it, and I appreciate it. Thank you for the support, brother. Greatly appreciate it, man. Let's see here. And Intellect said, Prime VR, all right, I'll keep an eye out. I'll be in Hawaii in three weeks. Oh, man. So y'all brothers, and I tell women that y'all better start paying attention. These brothers ain't playing. Y'all travel. Y'all travel more than me. Shit. And I'm always gone. So <laughs> I love to see it, man. Damn. You got some uh, successful man over here, brother. We got to do a live stream and have y'all y'all guys come up. Would y'all want to do that? Y'all want to come up? You know what I'm saying? And we just do a, a whole... I used to have members come up on Saturdays, every Saturday, but nobody um would come up. So if y'all want to get highlighted, yeah, I would love to have y'all on the show, man. We need to see that kind of representation, man. So I want y'all to enjoy the rest of your weekend and before we get out of here i'll just go ahead and play the bow tie video once again like i said hopefully it helps i will clip it up and uh if you need me to you know you want me to do any more tutorials i definitely will i'm always open to that any way that i can help you know i'm, I'm here to do so so let me know uh under this live stream if you have any specific requests on like uh like clothing styles and so on and so forth how to uh, you know, smell fragrances, things like that. So um, whatever y'all want, man, I could definitely hook you up because what, as I learn, I want to pass that information on to you guys as well. So by no means am I an expert, except when it comes to whiskey, of course. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know, clothing, you know, uh, ties, I got you. I could definitely hook you up. But let me get out of here. Let me cue this up real quick. All right, got it going. So y'all enjoy the rest of your week. I'm going to actually put some food on the grill here in a second while I watch the uh, the Lakers game, the, the replay. So I'm just so proud of those boys, man, for um, for, for doing their thing. And Prime VA, he said, uh, yeah, he's going to come up. Man, I got you. I got you. I got you. Cool. Who said uh, – Andre Golden said, "What's your? what is your favorite – whiskey medium man um i actually did a video on it i can so okay on the outro i think i can play i'm a i like mccallan second to that is uncle nearest of course i love uncle nearest let me see here can i cue this up let me see if they'll let me Let me see. I want to play this. I'm trying to load the whiskey video of my favorite. Hold on. Here we go. Okay, cool. We in there. So I'll play this on the outro, right? So you guys can see the whiskey video. And I'll also play the uh, bow tie video as well. So stay tuned, even though I'm signing off. I have two videos for you guys. One is for the McAllen whiskey and how to taste it. And then uh, I'm going to have my bow tie tutorial right after that, guys. Okay? So, man, what the hell is this? Hold on. Man, C-Man came through again with the $300 bomb on your boy. I was just about to sign out. C-Man, and let me be clear. C-Man has done this maybe three or four times on my channel no lie so like i said man it is some successful brothers here brother i really appreciate that man like i said you, you guys definitely are responsible for all the upgrades all my, my new mics everything 
C-Man, huge part. Thank you, brother. On the way out. My goodness, man. <laughs> Y'all boys, man. That's why I love doing this, man. This is so enjoyable. Man, I greatly appreciate it, brother. And I definitely will uh, give you credit on Monday show. And you will be the show sponsor for the rest of the month, brother. Man, I can't thank you enough, man. Blessing to you. Appreciate it. He said, let's go Lakers and Brian. Absolutely, man. I appreciate the support as always, man. I mentioned that before. I've seen man has dropped, you know, bombs on your boy for a while. So <laughs> this is not new to him. So thank you. I will get out of here, man. Stay tuned for the whiskey video and also for the bow tie video, man. Y'all be safe out there. Eat healthy. You know what I'm saying? Drink good whiskey. And I will be back on Monday. So media man out. Peace. Here's the whiskey video first. Bam. So I promise you guys a bow tie tutorial. So the best way that I can show you is to put it on my formal shirt. I can't do it around my own neck because uh, this may be a little bit embarrassing, but my brothers do have some muscles and it's tough for me to get to the places where I need to get to. This is a 100% silk bow tie that I got from Joseph A. Bank. As you guys can see here, it's got the neck inches mark. So you can just adjust it to your neck size. I have an 18 inch neck. So I went ahead and adjusted that. Two separate parts. You got your hook right there and you got your clasp and you just attach it here. And now you have two parts. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on here. Like you would around your neck. I got my collar flipped up. You see that it's already buttoned to make it easier. About one and a half inches long. So you take the longest end and you put it over the short end. And then you put the long end behind the loop and then you make it a little bit tight like a little bit snug and for now you're done with the long end for a little bit so you got the shorter end hanging you take this side right here the easiest way that i can show you guys let me show it right there and then you take this finger and you put it right there like so you hold that together now see that already got a bow tie so then you take the longest end and you just bring it over the top, right down there in the middle. And you hold that in place. It's looking like a bow tie already, right? So you take this longest end and there's a little hole that this has created and you put the longest end like this and you just feed it through. Now you already got your little bow tie. Now you gotta fix it a little bit to make it tighter. 
Bam. So there you have it. Nice bow tie. So don't get worried if the bow tie is not like symmetrical on each side. You know, it's not gonna be the same, but that's what happens when you make your own bow tie. Because when you get one that's a clip on, people will notice if you're in a formal setting and it looks too perfect, then they'll know that you're wearing a clip on. So you never wanna do that. That's a sign of dustiness, as they say. <laughs> and there you have your formal bow tie. And this is how it looks right there. Got that on there, bam. And there you have it, hmm. bow tie. Pretty simple, but I mean, it takes some time to figure it out, but once you get it down pat, you're good to go. And also, quick tip, usually when you buy nicer shirts, they come with these plastic stays, as you guys can see there. Get rid of these and get you some metal ones. They make the collar lay a little bit flatter, and that's what you always want, right? So these are fairly cheap. I'm pretty sure you can get these on Amazon. So go ahead and grab you a box of those and make sure you take them out before you take them to the dry cleaners, take your shirts to the dry cleaners, or you put them in the wash, right? But with a shirt like this, this is a nice, as you guys can see right here, it's a formal shirt. So you never wanna wash these. You always wanna take this to the dry cleaners because it needs to be the whitest of the whites. <laughs> Shout out to Dr. Umar. <laughs> That's how you tie a bow tie. Hopefully that helps and I will see you guys on the next live stream. Medium and out, peace.